to get started. There we go. Okay, we are okay. here at Brian Kershiznik's studio. <laughs> yes, come follow us. Come with us. This is Brian's Provo Studio. Hey, <laughs> welcome. Do you have an appointment? Did you see the sign? On we the have an appointment. Okay. We do. We want to come <laughs> see right. your studio. All right. Come on in. Okay. Welcome. Um, so, um, usually when I am in Provo, I stay at my house here in town, where I, the house that my, a couple of my uh, kids are renting. But during COVID, uh, to minimize intersection with different germ families, I stay here. So this is my kitchen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of nice. And these are, this is uh, for a project I'm working, I'm doing a little, a tiny art show. And these are, I'm experimenting with doing some, uh, framing some tiny little drawings. Oh, so those are, light. here's for there scale. Go. These are, they're very little. small. Okay. And this is the work room. Yeah, task room, we call it. Just in the entry. And then this is the, this is the one that's messier usually. So, Here's the big studio. Uh, we'll look around at some things that are going. Uh, let me see. Six months ago, there's a, uh, maybe a number of these. I think this was this was up. I, this was up, but not painted very much. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, this painting is up. And I think it is done. I've already prepared another canvas underneath it, so it, this is stretched and hanging in front of it. Need to get something going there. Or upcoming. Commitments and uh, this is a big. This will actually be a big drawing that I'm doing for a, a place in. Uh, uh, for a friend of mine, Tom Taylor has a, a big uh, a big wall on the, in a building on, in a building near here, and so anyway, this will be a piece. It won't be finished as a painting, but just as a big drawing. That's the that's the study that I used for that. And then these are, these are some others that I chose to not use. Actually, I, I, I did these drawings and then I was talking to Tom about which one we should do. And he and his wife and I said, on three we will point to the one that we feel like should be, uh, that would work best large. And we all pointed to the same one. So. Oh, I'm gonna show that one next to it. Can you all hear us okay? I guess just let us know if you can't hear. Because I can scream. It seems okay. Okay. Okay, these are a bunch of starts. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where they are headed. This painting is called Judgment. And I'm not sure yet if it's about this fellow being judged or he is judging. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I kind of feel like judgment, even our own judgment, is something that flows out of us. By that I mean the, 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 the judgment of our lives is, is something that we do, not something that's done to us. I, I was reading a, an essay by uh, Adam Miller about that. And anyway, so I think this is kind of responding to that. Um, this is called Destination. You see up there are a lot of question marks at the top, which is, you know, kind of how I feel about destination sometimes. And, um, Sorry, I'm going over here. I just oh, want to show everything. Yeah, I don't know. These are all works in progress. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I just put a plant in her hand. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is, where, where that's going. Um, these are, I showed you those little drawings. These are some little frames I got for my tiny art show, which is, we, we're, we've yet to put a date on it, but I've got my little paintings going in here and getting some little frames for it. So, um, I was working on some woodcuts today, but I just uh, delivered them to the publisher, ran back to be here in time to. And if you're wondering, I just have to show this. If you're wondering if he's a mess when he does woodcuts, we did not sweep the floor. So no. that's no. all the wood. <laughs> no, we did not. There you that, go. That was today. Today I've been cutting wood. I haven't done any painting today. Just uh, 
doing uh, some doing woodcuts for this for this uh, book project for the Maxwell Institute. Okay, and then again, these are these are very much in progress. Uh, some of them are getting closer. I brought some paintings back from Kanash that are close to being finished. This one is called uh, Le Rêve Dangereux, which is the uh, the dangerous dream. And this is called I'm Still Here. It's kind of under a dark glaze right now. We'll see what happens. This is this is in transition, but uh, the dress is just words, words written over and over, and it's called clothed only in words. Um, but it's hard to see now. Um, this is called a tribute to the next thing. And there's some, here's, here's this is a, pain, a Jesus painting called Jesus Got Tired. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know what these... I think he must have gotten very tired. Um, this is another destination, a, a smaller piece, also called destination. This is this is you know just very early on. It's called questions full of truth. And this also got put under a, a what's a veil, which is a kind of a white glaze, and then I'll I'll build it back up. But it's a girl with owls. So. I got an etching by Franz Schwartz, a Danish uh, artist, that's called Pien mit Uglen, with me, which means girl with owls. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the, his, his composition is very different, but it's a charming little etching. And um, that's, uh, I do speak Danish. Um, this is this painting here is also very close to finish. It's called uh, "My Dream Forgot Me." Um, it's a little too early to see what's going on. It's, it's working title is "Noble Desires." This one is uh, "Big Saint," and that that one there is uh, that I, that was an old painting. Oh, you look into that one there. Yeah, that's an old painting that I'm reworking. And uh, it was, it, it, and it, it, but it's changed, but it, the title has stayed the same. It's still called L'Homme de la Maison, which is the man of the house. Uh, Disoriented Immortal, there's been some Instagram footage of doing some, working on this at an earlier state. I can't remember what that is called. This is just a start, start a uh, black field to start the painting on. This is, uh, Last time I did the open house, I, I drew a poster that advertised it, and then I just developed it into a painting. Um, and this is called Open House, in parenthesis, clothed only in words. This is, this is how I feel in open <laughs> house, right now, sorry. Like you're showing yeah, everything just, yeah, to everybody just, that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, it's just a little embarrassing, but you know, oh well. I, I have often said that art is mortification, you know, if you, if you, if you can't, if you, if you can't handle mortification, then it, it may very well be something you should do, but it's probably, it would be difficult to pursue it because it is kind of, at times, just kind of mortifying, it's kind of revealing and, um, so anyway, these are two, uh, other compositions that I'm starting on. I don't know what this one's called, I'll be, you know, something about that. This pianist, and this is uh, a young girl with a horse, which was uh, suggested to me by a friend for a certain purpose. But I, I, I have to get a hold of him to see if he's still interested. But I just want to, I, I just, I want to see him get the painting for the long. Uh, Sean, if you're watching, uh, we'll talk later. So, um, what's the, there's one more, and actually, I want to tell oh, everyone. This is also if you have any questions. Yeah. Ask them on here and yeah, we'll, if, we'll if, ask Brian. Yeah, this is another version of clothed only in words. Um, and as Tanya is saying, if you have any questions, you can ask, she will uh, monitor that. I can't see the screen. I'll be at the other side of the camera. But uh, are there, have any questions come in yet? Not yet. Okay. So, so I'm this still, will be really short, you know, if, it will. There are any <laughs> if questions. no questions come. If there are any questions, this will be. Sure. Um, 
I'm going to show a little bit more of your studio. Okay. That it's, sometimes these walls are totally full of paintings and sometimes they're not. But it's fun to see a working studio. Yeah, there's yeah, there's people. Let's see. Okay, we've got a few, so I'm gonna sit right here. Just a minute. How many paintings do you work on at the same time? Uh, the, the number of paintings that I'm uh, this is not atypical. It's not particularly high. Um, I I like to work on. Um, between 30 and 50 paintings at a time, but I have also have uh, another studio down in Kanosh, and it, it doesn't generally have as much on the walls as this does down here. But um, it's another big space, and, and there are times when they're both really full of uh, unfinished works. That is, uh, different artists have uh, different strategies to deal with this, but for me, that is a way of kind of take, taking the pressure off an individual piece that they're just there's so many of them going I, I you know frankly speaking confessionally I'm, I'm, uh, this is at this I'm in the phase of feeling fairly insecure about the body of work right now and it's hard for me to work on it if there's too much pressure on on an individual piece and so it, it, some of that pressure is diffused by any one piece doesn't have to succeed because there are so many others there are times when that number gets too big and it becomes kind of overwhelming. Um, if, if yeah, if, if I'm if there are a hundred pieces in progress, that it starts to get takes so long to get through to be working through them all that you kind of lose the thread. So I, I think probably somewhere around fifty is about optimal right now. And some of them take years to finish, and some of them finish up in a month or two. So. I don't, they're just on the wall till they're finished with me. Okay. We have another question. What are the various surfaces you paint on? What is your favorite surface, favorite surface to paint on? Uh, the, the favorite is a difficult question to answer. I, I like the texture of canvas, but I don't always paint on canvas. Um, and like these are panels that have canvas glued to them. And um, so, I mean, this will be boring if you're not an artist, but. Um, so, oh. So, Gosh. actually, what happened I thought that was you. <laughs> is it illustrates something. The, the paintings have this little one inch tab on the, on the ends so that when they fall off the wall like they just did. It's the, it's the tab that gets dinged and not the painting. And then when the painting's done, I just trim that off on the table saw. And then I can also, I can screw a little uh, strip of wood uh, to the panel so I can have these, these uh, little boards screwed to the wall. And so this one that just fell, you know, dinged up the corner, which is the tab that I'll just trim off. And I learned that by sad experience of dropping paintings that didn't have tabs, and then the damage was to the painting itself. It was problematic. So, so it, it was. It wasn't. It was not wisdom of foresight. It was wisdom of catastrophe that uh, uh, copy, you know, produced that solution. Also, sometimes I don't do it here because I have a big room, but I I'll also make little racks with little slots and. And the paintings can stand in the slots if I, if, when I'm having to work in a smaller space. Uh, and so I can have 10 or 15 or 20 paintings in a rack and they, they, it, 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 they don't take up a lot of space. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Do you have a, you, oh, you answered that, a favorite surface. Okay, any plans for a new book? And I know you just released um, one. Yeah, uh, the book, um, the book that just came out is now only, uh, I mean, maybe a year, a heavy year old. Uh, it is
is called Looking for Something and uh, is available on Amazon. It's published by um, uh, Unicorn Press, uh, an outfit out of London. And, um, and so at the moment, I'm, I, I still have a, a, a relatively new book. I'm always thinking about another book. And um, so, you know, I, I, but, uh, but it, it, nothing, in, nothing in progress right now. I'm also talking to, um, uh, uh, there's a, a friend of mine that I will collaborate with, uh, periodically, Rob Bukert, who is the uh, printer at Trist Press, uh, a fine art press. Um, and we are talking about uh, doing a book that will just be uh, uh, relief images. Just, uh, I don't think it'll have any words, it'll just be pictures. And, but that'll take years to do that many pictures, you know, to do it. 100 or 200 woodcuts. We'll use woodcuts that I have down in. Anyway, so, so yeah, I have some plans for some books. But. Okay. Oops. Um, just a minute. I lost it. How many languages do you speak? I've noticed you title a lot of your paintings in French. Yes, and French is not one of the languages I speak, but it's a frame, It's a language that I really like. I, I have to check this. I have to check my French with French speakers. I've I've had I've made some pretty uh, epic blunders in French uh, titles. I speak Danish. I was uh, a missionary for the uh, LDS Church in Denmark in the early 80s, and, um, uh, and I still have friends who I speak Danish to, to kind of keep it somewhat fresh, although obviously it's, it's a little rusty. When I go back to Denmark, which I've done uh, three or four times, um, it takes a couple of days to kind of relax back into speaking the language. It, it, it's a few days before I'm not translating everything and just talking, but... Um, I do also, after my mission, I moved to Norway. Norwegian and Danish are similar languages, and so it was, it was kind of an adjustment. So actually now Danes kind of ask me, uh, do you, are, do you, did you live in Norway? And Norwegians say, did you live in Denmark? So I, I think maybe I'm speaking some language that's kind of in between those two, but that can make myself understood. Um, I don't speak Latin and French, but I like to use Latin and French titles. Um, and I mentioned that I've made some epic mistakes, but sometimes the mistakes are accidentally lead me to other uh, titles, so I, I, it's kind of a fun experiment. My, um, my dear friend, James Seabach, who helped me, um, uh, helped me with my Latin uh, uh, died a year or so ago. But his daughter, I, I haven't worked with her yet, but she has expressed a willingness. She's a professor. And, uh, and, and so I, I have another source of uh, Latin. So I, I need to utilize that resource. And then French, I just, uh, I, my brother speaks French and I have friends who speak French and, and I know some Okay, let's see. Languages. Another one asked what you paint on, and we covered that, so you can re-watch this. We'll post this as an IGTV after the open yeah. house. I mean, one thing that I should <coughs> point out, because some of you might be painters, is I often, I mean, these, are, these are canvas glued to panel, and, and the tabs will be uh, ripped off of the table saw, and, and they'll be framed, but like in some instances, the canvas is actually stretched over a panel um, to be, and it will be like a, the, a painting like this will actually be a little smaller, and this this will be stretched around the side of the of the stretcher bars, just because I I I work a surface pretty um, 
aggressively. And if I'm working on a stretch canvas, the canvas gets baggy by the time I'm done. So I've stretched this canvas over a panel so it doesn't, it doesn't move so much when I'm working on it. And then I can stretch it later. Or uh, that's one way that I utilize. I have uh, some assistants who help me in the studio. And they uh, often will stretch my stretch the paintings for me. I tend to stretch them when they're somewhere around 90% done and finish them on the stretcher bars just because that kind of defines the new composition. Another reason I like to do that is sometimes you're working on a painting and you just realize, golly, I need to move that figure just an inch away from the edge of the format. And you can just move the format. You know, I don't have to repaint the figure. I can just move the format a little bit. So that's, that's kind of cheating. I know it's cheating. <laughs> but it works. Okay, this is a good question. Um, she does not well, they're all good questions. The other questions <laughs> they're, good. they're all good questions. <laughs> Uh, but I've never heard this one. Do you paint in your dreams? Uh, I do not recall painting in my dreams. I believe that I do the reciprocal, though. I think that something like what happens in dreams happens when I paint. That, um, that I process what's happening to me. I... I uh, there, there's something kind of automatic uh, about the, the way I approach or s look for subject matter and uh, it, there's kind of a stream of consciousness and then ways that I feel like my subconscious talks to me uh, in painting, which is I, I think often what is happening in our dreaming too. So, so no, I do not paint in my dreams, but I dream in my painting. Good. Okay, let's see. That was a good answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to write that in a second. <laughs> Thank um, you for that question. Uh, let's see. Thank you for all of it. Yes, all of these. Um, I see that you do various versions of a similar idea or theme. Mm. Is that just to explore it more? Yeah. Um, I, I, I actually, you know, I work on a lot of paintings at once and I do, you know, I'm, I'm fairly prolific, fairly prolific painter. And, um, uh, and so, yeah, I just try different, I usually, like these two are clothed only in words. Um, uh, I started on the same day, just as different variations. They may not both survive to the end. Uh, or they may, one or the other may change. Um, there are certain subjects that you could probably find, you know, a half dozen or even a dozen variations of, of um, that theme through the years. Um, this goes along with that question. Um, I've enjoyed your art centering around people carrying burdens, both seen and unseen. Do you have any of those in development currently? Uh, not here in this Studio. That's a fairly that's a fairly recent subject, and so that I still think about it a lot, and and so I mean that, there's a chance that that some of the burden paintings will still happen. I think it's uh, I think that was uh, that's a pretty fruitful uh, area of exploration, and um, and actually burdens have kind of come in and out of my uh, body of work a number of times through the years. I, I feel like they're kind of here right now. And after a while, I'll, I'll get kind of finished with it and stop, and then maybe later it'll assert itself for some other reason. Is the chart okay on the phone? I have. Oh, you don't I know. actually can't see the chart oh. while I'm doing this. So I hope so. <laughs> uh, my phone wasn't fully charged when we started, and so if we end abruptly, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> this is actually an interesting... Oops, I lost him. Hold on. Comment. Um, because I think sometimes people think um, successful artists don't have these feelings. But she said, whoa, you feel insecure at times? Thank you for saying that. Oh, God. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to whine, but um, I thought early on that I would somehow get beyond that and and grow up and and know what I was doing. But instead, what I have found is growing up involves learning strategies of how to be fruitful and productive, even in the times when you don't know what you're doing, which is a lot of the time. And it's not just a matter of not knowing what you're doing. That's not always, um, that doesn't always uh, engender insecurity, but there are also just parts of the cycle where, where uh, you, you, you think, who, who do I think I am? And what do I think I'm doing? And yeah, yeah. When, uh, I, I think that people uh, assume that because I truly tell you that I love what I do, that that just means I get, you know, 50 to 60 hours of bliss every week. And um, I, I wish it were so. Would, I think in any instance, when you turn something into livelihood, there's, this, there's an element of, uh, there is no job that doesn't have its, uh, its version of mucking out the staples. But besides that, so there's, there's the, the parts of it that are less pleasant than other parts. But in, in, a, in a vocation that requires um, wit and metaphor and uh, exploration, uh, you, you're operating on a hunch a lot and, they, and you find yourself down a road that is not, that, that looked really promising at first but isn't. And, and uh, so, yeah, it is, um, it is not, I would, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't have a meter to measure this, but it is not half the time uh, uh, the delightful part. <laughs> not, you know, I, I, yeah, not half the time. And, and frankly, currently, uh, it's been a rough month or two. I work, and I and I, I'm not unhappy with what I'm doing, but there's this kind of this sense of waiting upstream, and uh, and at some at the problem is is your best work is kind of accomplished when you're in the middle of it, and and so there's this, this long period of time for me when I am outside of it that I'm pushing to get into the middle, and you just resign yourself to several weeks of just pushing, and it doesn't feel good. Hopefully you're not doing too much damage, and then suddenly you start realizing you're picking up your pace to get to the studio, and you're and, and you're kind of in the middle of it. And then it's fun. That's funner, but you can't get there without the other part. Mm. All right. Um, I'm. You've used arrows in a lot of your work. Um, what are you reading and studying that's influencing all these directional arrows? Or um, the most direct quote would be uh, Paul Clay. But uh, and Paul Clay was using them just because they're kind of this. I, well, I believe. I mean, I have not spoken with Paul, but um, because there's this, they're this kind of intensely. Uh, uh, communicative graphic symbol, you know, it's showing you where the bathrooms are, or you know, or, or where it, it just uh, this an arrow is just such a uh, uh, a forceful image, a forceful directional image, uh, and so um, mm, I'm not reading something that suggests arrows, but but I have this kind of sense of the cosmos or the universe that that we exist in this. You know, I mean, I'm standing here because there is gravity kind of pushing me down and there are forces in the earth kind of pushing up, keeping me from just crashing through the floor. And, and there's, there's atmospheric pressure pushing in all around and, and, and pressure from inside my body pushing out in an equilibrium so I'm not crushed or I don't ex blow up, you know. And uh, so I, I kind of, I like the, it, it's provocative to me to kind of address that in painting sometimes, this kind of the forces pushing in and pushing out. Good. Okay, this is a, 
That's doing your cue. Other Steve, questions? Steve. That's Steve's cue. Steve is, Steve's uh, recording. Steve and Tanya are specific just over here helping me. Tanya <laughs> is doing the Instagram, and Steve is doing some, anyway, <laughs> yes. some filming for the YouTube channel. And and <laughs> Steve got caught up. Steve, yeah. <laughs> Steve wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, I want to thank you. This is a good... I want to thank them both (laughs) exceedingly. Okay, so I like this question. Um, What advice would you give an artist just starting out and not getting into shows and galleries? Uh, The the same thing that I advise I would give to artists that have been doing it for a long time and are in shows and galleries, paint. That that there's no way... Well... I'm assuming you're a painter. Do your work. Um, there is, uh, there is, there is. It, 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 that that's a complicated. It, it, being an artist is is complicated and weird. Um, you are on a journey to try to find out what is your authentic work, and it is just a gamble as to whether or not that is something that the world or your community needs right now. And when those things hook up, that what you need to do authentically can hook up with, uh, with a, uh, a community who also needs that, then, then you can make a living. But I think that historically there have been artists who, who's, I mean, you know, I mean, Van Gogh is kind of the poster child for this, but you know, what he needed to do authentically was in no way needed while he was alive. Uh, that came later. Um, and, but that's not, that is not the rule. I mean, people will say, oh, you're an artist, so your work will be valuable when you're dead. Actually, the bad news is, statistically, that's not even true. <laughs> statistically, it's, it's a rough go. So, um, um, so the um, if if you if you are an artist that will uh, succeed in art as a vocation, then you just got to make work, whether it's selling or not. You have to be making work, and indeed, uh, that is the only way to find your authentic voice is by by watching it emerge rather than forcing it or, or waiting for a market to drive it. That's actually, the market is a pretty corrosive um, influence on your authentic work. So it's good to kind of establish it, build the muscles of your authentic work. It, it is, it is, this is a really important time for you uh, before there are pressures and uh, demands outside but of your of your, you know, I mean, from galleries and shows and such. But I would say that, I don't know where you live, but there are exhibition spaces in town and libraries and public spaces and, and art exhibition spaces, uh, art centers, you know, that it's, it's an important thing to, t- to complete uh, a, a show of work and get it ready and presentable and hang it on the wall. You learn stuff about your own work that you wouldn't learn in any other way. And also, that's how people see it. And that's, that's often, I mean, that for me, that's kind of what led to galleries being interested in my capacity to, uh, to buy groceries. Good, Good luck. A- Good answer. <laughs> Good luck. Yep. Um, any of your work you've never been able to part with? Yeah, I keep uh, a number of paintings. Um, uh, you, you mean you run out of space, you know? But I, there's there are quite a number of my pieces in my house. Some of them rotate into the house and then leave. But <coughs> some of them some of them stay. I don't I don't keep the keeping a painting. The decision to keep a painting is not this is the best ever, so I'm going to keep it. It it usually is has more to do with this is particularly emblematic of what I'm doing right now and I, I'd like to have a record of it uh, or this is particularly uh, personal or describes something very poignant about me and uh, it, it, at times they are not particularly popular paintings but they're 
personally very uh, significant. You see, when you, when you see a show of my work, you see a still, but for me, there's this whole long process that produces the work. They, they exist for me more, um, I mean, almost more like movies. Movies that were failing and then succeeding and then you lost this thing and then you found this thing. And, and so, you know, very often the experience that was uh, significant and important and formative for me is not necessarily fully recorded in the finished product. So you may see it and think, yeah, that's fine. And, and for me it was this, I remember when it was flailing and then I remember having, making the risk of trying this solution and it really resolved the painting and taught me something either artistically or the metaphor taught me something poignantly about being a human. And so, yeah, I keep work. Okay, let's see. There's actually, we're probably not going to get to everything. Some are sort of some that we've answered. So if you're watching and we don't get to your question, it might have been answered earlier on. So you can watch this on IG, IGTV. Um, let's see, here's one. Aside from buying as much art as possible, how do we support amazing artists? What has made you feel the most supported and enabled? That's interesting. Yeah, um, certainly uh, uh, acquiring it is is good. Of course, if the burden of my livelihood rests on very few people, you know, you'll, your house will fill up very soon. So, you know, it, I think, I think buying it and encouraging other people to buy it too. Um, um, art is also kind of produced by, th there's, a, there's an important ingredient of, of community that is uh, friends, often family, um, just people that, uh, that are in your studio regularly. I mean, these, these people that are here filming this, uh, Tony and Steve, are close friends, and, and they're in the studio often. And, uh, Steve and I play music together, and, um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I don't, I think that, I think that people that are supportive of me as a human are supportive of me as an artist. Um, when you don't know me personally, then it, it uh, um, then please purchase my <laughs> 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 But um, it, that 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 greases the machinery of uh, of being able to produce more, being able to justify the. Uh, all of the things that I have to neglect in my life to, to do this. So, thank you for your support. Okay. And I would also say that if you see young artists and you think their you think their work has merit, get some. Even though you can almost be assured that this is not their best work. Their best work is yet to come, but their best work will not come if they don't do it. And so um, I, I also, I acquire work of other artists and, uh, and, and uh, young artists um, that I feel an, uh, a desire to encourage and support. And those, that work uh, enriches my life. Okay. Did I ask this one? Was there ever a time you didn't create? A lot of people never do. Has there ever didn't been a time create. you didn't? I don't think I asked that. Um, I was a I was a fairly creative, uh, curious, uh, in some ways kind of tiresome little boy. Um, uh, um, I had no notion of becoming an artist until I was in college, but I I always drew, but I didn't draw for anyone else. I drew to entertain myself, and I had friends that one of our games was we would draw. We would draw mostly to make each other laugh. Interestingly, Steve Vistana, who's behind that camera there, he and I kind of do that. It's just like being in the third grade with Jose and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and some really, I, I feel like some powerful paintings have actually emerged from that kind of uh, relaxed uh, work where, where maybe the 
primary cognizant intention is just to make Steve laugh, but I've stumbled into some good paintings that way. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, sorry. There's, there's actually quite a few I'm trying to sort of put yeah. together. Oh, as you know, with these uh, Instagram Live things, uh, it, it is hard for us to get all of the questions. And sorry if we miss you, but we are very glad you are here. There's actually quite a few people that just are love your work and are happy listening to this. So thank you. Let's see. Do you listen to music while you work yes. or books or not books? Music. Um, I can't listen to books when I paint, um, and I'm sorry about that because there are a lot of books I would like to read, but I, 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 when I'm painting, it, different artists have, there's this different ratio of, um, of inspiration to execution, and so to some, some artists, the inspiration all happens at the beginning, and then there's this period of execution, and, uh, uh, but that's not how it works for me. It's, all, it's happening kind of at the same time. And so if I'm listening to a book where I have to follow uh, information and narrative, then I, I, I suddenly realize, oh my gosh, I, how far back, how long ago did I stop hearing what was happening? And, you know, what chapter? So I listen to books on tape sometimes when I'm driving. And, and there are certain parts of the process where I might be able to, but most of the time in the studio, it is music that I listen to. And, uh, and the thing about music is if you don't hear it, if your brain switches off, uh, that's okay. You can, I am very old fashioned. I listen to CDs. I don't, I don't listen to Spotify and such, not yet. But, uh, but my, my band is on Spotify, by the way. A Tiny Bicycle Parade, little plug for Tiny Bicycle Parade. And our new album, which is coming out soon, um, but well, and someone said, where do you play your music? And I'm going to show them right here. Yeah. Um, we Tuesday night. We do band <laughs> practice here. And we do, uh, we do Instagram live concerts periodically. We'll probably do another one in the next month or so. So uh, uh, by all means, follow us on uh, Tiny Bicycle Parade. Uh, and, uh, and you'll be notified of those performances. But yeah, Tuesday night, uh, Steve and I... And we have and Corey Strains is a drummer, and Paul Woodward plays the cello, and my niece Berkeley sings backing vocals, and uh, so when everybody's there, that's the whole band. And uh, uh, but the but and and also I stop painting sometimes and just play. Uh, I'm writing a song right now, which doesn't happen that often, but that I tend to kind of be fascinated by. Uh, or well, are just interested or preoccupied by the song that is trying to happen, and, and so I keep leaving this easel and, and playing it through again and changing it and such. So that's why things are kind of set up like that there. Um, okay, I'm going to answer this question, okay. <laughs> just because it's a quick answer. Is your piece, She Will Find What Is Lost, available for public viewing? If so, where? Is it It's still up at the... At the uh, conference center yeah, the in LA's downtown conference Salt Lake. Center in downtown Salt Lake, oh. uh, in uh, in like one of the big foyers, they'll tell you, they'll show you where it is. You go in, and it is, uh, it is available for public view. Probably most, I mean, among other reasons, I hope, because I think it's too big for them to store. <laughs> <laughs> so it's there on the wall. Has been for a few years. It's very large. Um, Sometimes people don't realize that the original is, I think, 11 feet tall. By it's, 8 feet or something? Yeah, it's yeah big. 8 feet wide and 11 feet tall, something like that, close to that. Were, were you guys there when we stretched? Yeah, you there? we had it. Yeah, they, uh, Tanya and Steve helped me stretch it there when it was purchased by, um, by uh, Chris and Janae. And, um, and they have, uh, the, uh, the church owns it now, but. So along with murals or large paintings, you've done some large paintings. Yeah. Is there a mural or large painting you have wanted to paint but haven't been ready to start? Um, no, if I'm ready to start, I might do them. Um, I am finished. I've posted on Instagram a couple uh, steps along the way. It's called, um, it's the same subject as this large drawing, although a different format called uh, uh, Young Immortals Planting the Trees. 
and it's nine by 20 feet, and, but it doesn't have any particular destination. If you have a big mantle and, or a really huge sofa and you need a <laughs> nine by 20 foot painting, uh, talk to me. But um, I have some ideas for what's going on the wall after that one comes down, so I'm starting to feel kind of anxious to get it finished. Well, I'm not always working on paintings on that scale, um, but it, the, paintings on that scale are mostly fun to work on. Then the fun stops because they're big and a hassle to move around and a difficulty to exhibit. And, but, uh, but they're fun to do. Okay. We pro we're coming to the end. We've got it. I just got to notice that the battery's going to die. Oh. Plus, we're about yeah. 45 minutes. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, the yeah, battery's uh, ticking away. So, again, if this ends abruptly, I love you and goodbye. <laughs> but uh, if we can make it to the conclusion, then that's good. Okay, let's see. I think I've got a lot of them, the questions. And if you didn't get your question answered, I'm hoping it was answered maybe in the beginning. This will go on IGTV. So do you want to wrap it up? Let's, yeah, let's wrap we'll wrap it up. It up. Uh, I, I, even when, uh, when uh, Instagram open houses are no longer necessary because of COVID-19, I, I believe I will continue to do at least one a year because I, I, it so far has been nice to be able to reach people that are not... Uh, in the neighborhood and unable to just come into the studio. I, I generally do two open houses a year in April and October. And um, and I have a studio here in Provo and a studio in Kenosha. I think you can see uh, footage of both of those in on Instagram and on my YouTube channel. Um, and, and you know, if it, and, and uh, register on kershisnik.com and you'll be notified of these things. And what's that? <laughs> oh. Steve's typing in my phone and says, I like your beard. So oh. we need him to quit oh. trying oh. to make me laugh. Steve which likes is going to make beard. you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and your mom's on here. My mom? Hi. My mom, you said? Yes. Hey, mom. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, if you my go mom, to. My parents uh, were kind of unspeakably supportive, considering it was just totally unknown territory. My father was a very practical man and it, and I think was a little bewildered that uh, he had a son who was a, a musician and then, and then a son who was an artist. Um, uh, and um, there, I have four brothers, but it, two of us in those kinds of uh, creative pursuits. But uh, anyway, I, I really appreciate, my father's deceased, but um, mom was, is, uh, Obviously, she's on. She's uh, she's listening right now, but uh, they they are they are kind of amazingly supportive and uh, and maybe not particularly objective critics, but uh, but beautifully supportive all the same. Thank you, love you, mom. Okay, so just a plug that if you want to see some of the past, there is a Kanash studio visit and another studio visit on IGTV. Yeah. And on your YouTube channel, which yeah, is just yeah. Brian Kirsch, isn't it? Yeah, and by all means, see them. And, and you'll start to see that I, 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 I don't know that I've been that redundant this time, but some of the stories show up again, so I apologize for that in advance. But, but uh, we had a couple new questions today, yeah. too, that I haven't heard before that I thought were really good and appreciate mm -hmm. it. And, um, and thank you. Thank you for your support. Glad you're here. And, um, and we're going to go get some dinner. So um, I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.